Hi Year 10. Um, I hope you've had time to look at Star Wars Analysis Lesson 1 and annotate your scores in a detailed way. This is the second lesson in that same series and we're going to pick up where we left off which is bar 36 in your score. You might remember that we've just had those four jazz chords that were throwing us into a bit of ambiguous tonality um, just as the opening crawl had disappeared and we were left with this black sky or starlit sky. So I'm just going to remind you of that and then we'll move on to that next section. So here we go. Now, just those three bars um, accompany the black starlight sky with pretty much nothing else there apart from the stars. And it's only just right at the end of those three bars that we start to see um, a planet in there um, in the distance. But let's, let's kind of focus on those three bars. One thing that's missing completely from those three bars you may notice is any bass instruments. Now there's a very specific choice there from John Williams. He's trying to create a feeling or a lack of gravity. And what's the best way of doing that? Well, the best way is be able to use all uh, higher timbre instruments and to miss out the bass completely because we don't have that stability, that gravity there. So just make a note on your score in bars 36, 37, 38 that there are no bass instruments used there, creating a lack of stability, maybe gravity or floating feeling. Also, the things that create the kind of um, space feeling and mysterious feeling being way up in the sky um, are also things like the piccolo, for example. So the choice of the highest instrument in the orchestra to play this little melody over bar 36, 37, 38 um, to create that feeling of floating in the air uh, with also use of sex tuplet there as well, the floaty feeling. And then underneath that, we've also got the flute playing that trill, very idiomatic, that word idiomatic, meaning um, the uh, writing for the instrument is very specific to that instrument. And a flute is a, a really, really good instrument for creating a trill sound. And it creates a sense of eeriness. Note the chord that's being used. After all those jazz chords we've just had, remember in bar 33, we had a D flat, seven sharp and nine. 34 we had an A minor chord and 35 we had that A flat augmented chord. Suddenly at bar 36 if you look at this middle middle line where it says flute, piano and the trill, if you identify those notes they're actually C, C, E natural, G and C which is a C major chord. Slightly strange uh, amongst the chords that we've had before and also contrary to the key signature that we have. The key signature is either suggesting E flat major being three flats, B flat, E flat and A flat, or C minor. Uh, and yet we've got this C major chord against that uh, key signature. Um, it also is um, at opposition really to the harp line as well. So you can see the harp there and it's just playing this little ostinato from an A flat a flat to C, crotchets, uh, crotchet and then two quavers. Um, and that's clearly looking kind of, it's using the A flat, so possibly a little bit more C minor-ish. Um, not only that, but the choice of the harp is also quite idiomatic there. It's uh, The harp has got this real kind of magical feel, uh, a fantasy feel. We all know that when we start to watch Star Wars, we're not, we're not looking at a documentary, we're looking at something that's not real, uh, something that's fantasy, something we can lose ourselves in. And the harp is a brilliant choice of an instrument to create this kind of um, magical feeling. Um, and the, the obviously the long chord that's held in, in the flute and the strings there is also creating a, a good feel of static um, this, and spacey feeling. So really fantastic just that three bars can accompany that starlit sky to make us feel eerie, um, it, it, a bit enigmatic, a bit dark, a bit sinister spacey lack of gravity i mean all those adjectives just by uh, three bars now as soon as we go on bar 39 this is where we start to see the film starting in it in its essence at bar 39 so i'm going to actually hold this up again i have looked for the software to be able to to um do this but it's out of date with my computer unfortunately so i have to hold it up but just so you can see i mean obviously you can look at the youtube link yourself as well but you can see at this point, we start to see the planet. And then the rebel blockade runner 
come into um, the picture as well. Now, bar 39, the 40 and 41 are classified as the second link. The first link being bar 30, where we first heard um, those kind of spiralling sextuplets, where everything was spiralling out of control. This is again propelling the music forward. Can you see the sextuplets and the violins in bar 39? Um, are all moving upwards in this uh, little kind of melodic sequence and that's creating a feeling of propelling forwards and then if you see the spaceship come as well that's the whole idea of moving forwards and of a kind of a chase scene at that point and the fact they're ascending obviously they're going up um, and also, also in the bass you can see there's an ostinato those would be cellos playing that in the bass clef at bar 39 um, to match what the violins are doing but um, they are actually playing an ostinato. Can you see that it repeats? So you have one lot of sex tuplets and then an, the next lot of sex tuplets, they're different, but then we go back to the previous one and so on and so forth. So there's two lots of sex tuplets in an ostinato at that point. Um, and then in the midst of the texture, we've got trombones playing these chords. Again, weirdly enough, C major. But can you see it's in its second inversion because it's got C, E and G in the chord, C major chord but it's got the G at the base, so it's actually a second inversion chord. Um, totally unrelated chord to, to the key signature that we've got. Couldn't be further away. And a really weird sense. A second inversion chord's quite a weak chord, so possibly giving us that feeling of not all is, is well. We're not quite sure what's going to happen um, in the future. Now, huge crescendo, can you see? Sometimes dynamics are amazing at creating a real... Um, sense of drama in bar 41 you can see a huge crescendo and the French horn added in in the brass that's going to lead us to this march section at bar 42 now the first instrument we see in bar 42 is the timpani and it's playing these bare octaves can you see it's got a C and a C um, an octave apart and again, it's it's um, manipulating this sex tuplet rhythm that we heard before. It's got a very military-esque feeling. Okay, so we'll just go on to that, and I will hold it up so you can see the um, the film with it. I'm just going to pop stop it there just so we can look at that. So I'm now moving over to this final page of the set work. We're looking at bar 43. Now against that military-esque rhythm in the timpani drum, we've also got the brass playing da da dum dum da 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 dum Now can you hear that that little motif is very similar to the opening um, da 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 Luke Skywalker's light motif. So um, that's a, a motif there, a light motif for the rebels at that point. Um, and then we go into 3-4. Can you see it? the time signature change at bar 34? And we get this build up on that triplet rhythm. Now the triplet is clearly um, very similar to that sex tuplet, just a smaller division. Uh, and that's building up a chord all the way through. Can you see the texture is gradually getting more and more as more instruments are added throughout bars 44 to 4, uh, 50, okay? Um, they are, once we get C, can you see C, D flat and G in bar 44, actually any notes that are then added between 44 and 50 are not new. They're just a build up of the same chords but over the top of what's already there. So we've got C, D flat, and G flat, and then in bar 46, we've then got the octave G above it. And oh, we have got an F added there, but then gradually over the top, we only get a G and a C added. So it's creating uh, again a feeling of chordal harmony. Can you remember we talked about before um, any kind of fourths that built on top of each other, superimposed? Uh, are creating what we call a quartal harmony, which again gives us that feeling of that military-esque um, idea. Okay, and also clashes, if you think about it. So C to F is fine on its own, but with a D flat and a G, which is also a fourth, the C and the D flat are going to clash, and the F and the G are going to clash with each other. So we're getting this, cr this kind of feeling of tension at this point, um, obviously, that's going to... Uh, relate to the battle that's happening. Um, against that, can you also see that we have a tonic pedal at bar 44 as well in the bass, and that's got the, completely the same rhythm as this quartal harmony that's being built up over the top. Um, we would call this texture, try and think, try and, I'll pause so you can say it. It's a homorhythmic texture at this point. Everybody is playing the same rhythm, 
but just different notes okay so we're getting that build up to accompany the uh, the battle scene okay then we move on um yeah okay so we're going to move on from bar 51 now okay here we go There we go, this lovely C3PO and um oh, my name's defeated me, how awful is that? Um it'll come to me in a minute. Right, now so at that point we've got our codetta, the ending that's going to then uh, go seamlessly into uh, the visual cue um and the rest of the film. So at this point we have a faster tempo again. Can you see the change of tempo? Crotch equals 160 now at this point. The bass, the pedal, has carried on all the way through this. So at this point, it really is sort of kind of suggesting C minor with that tonic pedal. Same rhythm, same ostinato that we've heard before, same driving feeling, and forte octaves. Now above it, we have these brilliant chords. You couldn't hear them very well on there because you had obviously the film noise over the top of it. But they're da 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 -da 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 -dum -dum. very highly charged chords they are they're very iconic and they're kind of um, giving us the feeling of the Imperial Star Destroyer if, I wouldn't call this a light motif but it's definitely giving us that feeling that uh, all is not well um, now let's look at these chords in a little more detail now bearing in mind we might be in C minor at this point let's look at those notes in those chords so in bar 52 end of 52 we have an uh, A flat a D flat and an F just give you some time to think about that. Hopefully you come up with the idea that that is a D flat major chord. But, as it's got the A flat at the bottom of the chord, we will call it a second inversion chord. Okay? So there's a second inversion chord of D flat major. Then in the next bar, in bar 53, can you see that D flat major chord is still there, but now we see it in its root position. Okay, now that chord is a very special chord and you will hear this um, in other pieces of music and especially if you're going on to, to study at A-level you will uh, see this chord a lot more um, and used for very specific reasons as well. Um, in C minor, chord 1 is C, chord 2 is D of course, D natural. Now we have a D flat so we'd call that a chord built on the, uh, the flattened second of the key. Now um, we call that a special chord, it's a, a Neapolitan chord, so a chord that is built on the flattened second of the key is a Neapolitan chord. Now usually it's called a Neapolitan sixth because of the inversion, it's usually in its uh, second inversion like in, in bar 52 and that creates a sixth between the bottom note and the tonic. Um, but, however, in this form, we're, going, we're here at bar 53, we're just hearing that it is a chord built on the second flattened uh, degree of the scale, so therefore is a Neapolitan chord. All right, very special chord, and it's got a very distinct sound to it. Okay, as we get to bar 57, we've got a very strange chord there as well in C, uh, C minor, one that is completely alien to the key, and that's an F flat major chord. So this F flat major chord is just literally creating a whole lack of uh, tonal stability. So it's really trying to create that feeling of um, angst and kind of chaos and being thrown out of the uh, you know all that we know. So all of these chromatic chords that are being uh, used around there is just trying to take away the stability. The only stability we do have is that tonic pedal going in octaves all the way through those bars, which I suppose you could say is related to the rebels. Um, being the stability and the bit over the top being the uh, Imperial Star Destroyer creating that chaos and uh, a lack of stability and then obviously it fades away for the Q C-3PO and R2-D2 it's just come to me <laughs> okay so hopefully that has gone over uh, the set work in some detail and for you to be able to analyse and annotate your scores. I would like you to do that for this week. That should take you only about 20 minutes to 30 minutes um, with, whilst looking at the video and then just going through your score. Do then please go over the whole piece with your notes, listen to the music alongside that and just check your understanding, check that you know what, you're, you're, uh, what we're talking about on all of the different details and also if you've got any questions obviously please then email Mrs Gove or I respectively um, if you've got questions we'd love to answer them and to help you out make sure you're understanding everything that we're talking about 
Um, next time I'm going to be setting an essay style question or a project um, a little bit different to the essays we usually do. I thought it might be a bit more fun to look at John Williams as a whole because he's such an awesome composer um, and he does tend to have a formula that works really really well so I'd really love to relate everything to Star Wars, this theme from Star Wars but then compare it with uh, another theme from your choice by John Williams um, and look at the formula he uses to create an amazing score in Star Wars and try and relate that to another piece of music, another theme by the same composer um, and see if he does the same things each time. So that would be to do with the texture, the melody, um, maybe to do the tonality, the instrumentation, all of those different things, structure as well. But more about that next time. I will set that obviously the following week, but for now, your job today is just, or for this week, is just to uh, go over, analyse your score, go over the whole piece with the music. Um, if you could then take a photo of your notes and upload those to the Google Classroom as evidence, that would be super. And then I'll post the assignment for the following week. Okay, hope you're all well. See you later. Bye-bye.